Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kennedy, and today I'm doing a little, like, reading vlog review thing for The Beautiful by Renee Adier. So, last night I read The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I absolutely love this world, the concept, and everything. So, I thought I would get ready. We'll talk about it, what I liked, what I didn't like, and just the world in general. And I'll try and do a little bit of a makeup that matches this cover. I'll be scattering, probably reading some reading vlog footage in between this. I have some footage of when I read it last night. The Beautiful. I don't know practically anything except it's set in the late 1800s. There's vampires involved and murders and it takes place in New Orleans during like Mardi Gras time. I've heard complaints that there's not enough vampires. I've heard that it's kind of like Stalker the Ripper. My thoughts, I love that it's about vampires. I thought it was going to be my new vampire-ish until somebody said it's not. It doesn't have enough vampires in it and I was like oh crap. That's what I was kind of looking forward to. And then someone said that it does have enough vampires. It's just not laid out the way they advertised it which is kind of which kind of is like really sucky. And it's more of a Stalker the Ripper vibe of um like the book Stalking Jack the Ripper. The bad thing is is that I tried to read Stalking Jack the Ripper and I didn't like the first how many pages I read of it. And so I not DNF'd it, but I just didn't read on. I was like, okay, maybe I'll pick it up another time. Cause I don't think I was in the mood, but I just honestly didn't, nothing really appealed to me when I started reading it. So I kind of DNF'd it. And so that makes me a little bit scared to dive into this. I did read a little bit. By little bit, I mean like the first two chapters. Nothing huge. I'm on page 15. And so far, it's easier to read than Renee's Adier, Wrath in the Dawn. I think it's because the world is just more similar and I understand like the premise a lot better. You do get like the first chapter is obviously a vampire and then the second chapter is kind of all about um, our main character Celine. So we'll see how I feel about if it has enough vampires in it. But I'm gonna read this. I'll let you know how I feel about it. The cover, I don't know how I feel, like, feel about the cover. The cover is pretty but it doesn't really tell you anything. I'm excited that it's 1800s. I'm excited that it's New Orleans. Um, Vampire Diaries basically ruined me and makes me want to go to New Orleans so badly. Vampire Diaries is so good and the show, especially the, like, the originals, which was set in New Orleans, is so good. So let's get into it. How about for a synopsis? So going into it when I was reading The Beautiful, I was given vampires, New Orleans, and that it was Renee Adier, and now she's great at creating an atmosphere. I have read The Wrath and the Dawn um, duology by her, and I really enjoyed it, but her writing is so beautiful that... I kind of had not a hard time. Her writing just took some time getting used to. I don't know if you want me to say what products I'm using. I'm using the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer and I have um, face tape by Tarte for foundation. Basically, the book is about a girl named Celine. She's from Paris and she migrates to New Orleans because she killed her rapist basically in Paris and kind of has to flee um, or she will be put to death in Paris, which is awful. So she then runs away, she meets a whole bunch of girls, she lives at a coven in New Orleans, and when she's working there she ends up meeting this girl named Odette, who finds out that Celine is a like seamstress or like someone who d was in a Paris fashion. So Odette then hires Celine to, to make her a dress for a masquerade ball during Mardi Gras, and that is when she meets this guy named Bastion, and his his whole court, which they call the Court of Lions, so like his crew, all while a serial killer has been kind of plaguing New Orleans and killing young girls in the area. She kind of finds herself in the middle of this court, being drawn to the sky and the mystical powers of the court and of New Orleans. So that's kind of the synopsis. It's about 50 pages later. Yeah, 49, um, page 49. I am really liking it. It's really easy to read. The main character is cool. I love that she's a seamstress and I love her friend Pippa a lot. I think that's really cute. So far we've only heard from like Celine's kind of point of view-ish and the vampire's point of view so that's kind of cool. I had heard things about this book of like how there was no vampires and how it was slow but 
I have to like kind of disagree with everything that's been kind of being said about this book. I think people c confuse slow with like build up. There is a lot of build up and ha more, more than half of this book is build up. But I didn't mind because I really enjoyed the characters. The characters are so well written, especially Celine's character. Celine's character is written so well. And I think if you're not invested in the characters within this book, you won't like it because not as much action happens until the last half of the book. Sorry if you hear it talking in the background. My dad's working outside and the window is right behind you so I don't know if I ever put on too little or too much foundation but I'm having not a good skin week. This is what's just gonna happen. So if you don't like build-up books, you just want things to happen on the action, you probably won't like this book. I tend to like a lot of action, but the build-up of the characters and especially the romance is just so great. So I kind of like didn't mind it at all. Also, the vampire element. People saying there's no vampires. It's a flat-out lie, to be completely honest, I think. Like, the first chapter is of a point of view of a vampire, and I get it's not the vampires we know and love. Like, the vampire diaries where the love triangle is with vampires like it's not in your face but it revolve like their whole world revolves around these mystics and illusionists and witches and vampires so I think it was well done and the fact that Renee doesn't like blatantly say vampire at first I think is just a call to like using your knowledge. Sorry if this is in the way. I'm trying to be aware. Next I'm going to be using the Jeffree Star concealer. I don't get why people say that there's no vampires because there clearly is vampires. I guess it's just not the way that a lot of people have been seeing vampires, especially how they've been like portrayed in the media. So I get it. I mean, I was expecting, I wasn't expecting much. Like I was expecting a lot when I first heard the synopsis, especially her hearing it's vampires. And then the reviews came out. And so then I kind of like lowered my expectations a little bit of the book, which I'm kind of glad I did. I kind of just put my disbelief at the fact that there wasn't gonna be any vampires. Cause people were like, oh my God, there's just not enough vampires. So I was like, oh, is there none? So I just kind of like thought that there would be absolutely no vampires. That's what I kind of put in my head and there is vampires. People who say there's not, they're tripping. It's not true. I'm gonna be using the Fit Me Maybelline uh, matte pore list to kind of set that. The atmosphere is absolutely great. I love how Renee Eddie can paint a picture. The Wrath and the Dawn, it was beautifully written. Since it wasn't like our world, it was a bit harder for me to get into her flowery writing. But in this one, since I knew the world and the setting a little bit more, it was easier to get into that flowery writing and how she writes it. Next, I'm gonna be using the Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder to kind of set this whole face and using a brush for this one as well. The atmosphere was really beautiful. It was really dark and eerie but not too dark where it kind of just makes you feel like dreaded all the time. It was really well done especially since New Orleans has that atmosphere already but it just adds to it the way Renee Adier writes it. Next I'm taking a more angled brush and I'm going into the Morphe palette, the AL um, highlight and contour palette and I'm basically just going to go into like the first two up and do my contour. Going off of atmosphere, the characters. I really enjoyed the character development with this one. This is definitely a character driven story. So if you like things where more action happens, probably not the book for you. Celine is amazing. She's headstrong. You can tell that she has demons and she's running away from her murder charge basically in Paris. And so she has to deal with herself, but she also has to deal with her race. I really loved how Renee Adier kind of made her mixed race. She is half Asian and half white. So so she has to deal with keeping that Asian part hidden from the world since this is the 1800s and if people knew that she like had some Asian in her they would not treat her the same. They would treat her as a minority and not as white as they think she is so she's had to always like struggle with keeping that part and that side of her just at bay and not tell anybody. She doesn't tell anybody really because her father made her keep it a secret so I thought that was really cool. I love how Bastion's best friend is Indian. I like how they mention the whole thing of if one drop or one percent of like African American in you you're treated differently. The best friend like wants to be a lawyer but he's Indian and he can't because they won't let him. It's just all these things. So I like how they really go into that and mention that and bring a lot of like minorities like up to the stage. Pippa was a great character. I loved her as a friend and how she just like was truly just wanted to be loyal to someone and have someone to have her back. Bastion just stole my heart. 
if I'm being really honest. Like he was great. I loved him as a love character because he was he was headstrong, but he didn't try and like but like Celine was headstrong. So they just like made like I think a really good couple in the fact of they both like are just strong people and just want someone to be there for them and care for them. But their love was so angsty. It was the whole book just made me just want them to be together so badly, like so badly. I totally stand them as a couple. I stand everything that they want to do. I don't care. And I love like the whole crew aspect. And I know with like the past like Six of Crows, like kind of crews are kind of, they're in style, but then also I feel like since so many books now have like a crew of people, it's not as in style. So I like the fact that he had a crew, but it wasn't like all the people weren't like focused on on that crew like they were they were focused on but like Odette and a June a Jun a Jun were like mostly like the two that you kind of like got to know like really well Odette I loved Odette I stand her I stand the fact that Renee made her love women over men it was great the whole like how the each of them have a um, purpose I'm taking the naked palette smoky and I'm going in with the like kind of gray color so I really enjoyed their whole dynamic uh, like everybody in like the crew had their kind of um not duty but their kind of job within that crew but you mostly do just focus in on like Odette and Najun um and I like them kind of the best so I didn't mind focusing in on on them I'm just taking a more of like a cleaner brush and I'm just uh blending it in so it doesn't look as horrendous so yeah um they were just great side characters especially I loved Odette I love the use of language within this book. French, Spanish was spoken in it, and I like how Renee Adier didn't, like, she didn't always translate what was said because, like, their responses should indicate what they're kind of talking about. And, and, like, if you have, I don't mean to be rude, but, like, a brain, like, you would know, like, kind of the field of what they're going. I'm dipping back into the Naked palette and I'm doing the second lightest. And that's just gonna go kind of just over the lid to kind of put something down and kind of blend out this more gray color. I really enjoyed their whole like bantering, especially the banter between Celine and Bastion. Like it just gave me chills sometimes. And then when literally like there's a part where she stinking calls him like too beautiful to be real or something and then he's standing right behind her and I'm just like okay like I don't care if like this has been overdone I loved it it was great now I'm taking like a little just a flatter brush and I'm going into the silver to kind of match the silver on the cover their whole banter between Bastion and Celine were just amazing I think Renee Adia did a really good job of just making sure to have that kind of angst so while people do say it's slow, I kind of get where they're coming from in the fact of like, you're getting to know the characters a lot, but I felt that the getting to know the world and the characters was so interesting to me that I didn't even realize technically that it was like being slow. I like understand. I understand that people don't like things to be slow. They want like here and now action, but I really appreciated the slowness of it because you kind of got really to know New Orleans and the atmosphere within that. Sorry, I'm dipping into a color in the Jaclyn Hill palette. It's the second one, second lightest color in the Jaclyn Hill palette, just to give myself some lightness, because goodness, it's kind of being a bland look, which I didn't mean for it to do, but I just really enjoyed the whole book and the atmosphere of it. I'm going in with the James Charles Morphe palette, Don't Come For Me. I got it before all the controversy, and I'm going in with like the red shade. So I really enjoyed what Renée Adier did, the world that she's building. I'm so excited for the second book. I don't know if it's going to be a series, a duology, a trilogy, but I really appreciate that she's kind of breaking the barrier down for vampires to kind of come back because it's kind of been not shunned in the YA, but ever since like that whole Twilight, Vampire Academy, and like Vampire Diaries kind of died down, there kind of hasn't been much luck in bringing vampires kind of back into the fence centerfold, which kind of sucks because Twilight got me into reading. Like I have such a fandom of of vampires and like that whole thing like vampire diaries ruled my life for a few years twilight got me into reading i just i'm just glad they're coming back and in a good way and not in like a bad weird way okay so i'm gonna 
I'm going in with the Scandalous Reloaded by Rimmel. The vampire element I think is done really really well. We all know the generic vampire stories um, so I really appreciated her take and her take on not just vampires but like other types of monsters because vampires aren't the only monsters she's like mentioned in this book and while she doesn't give you a ton of information on the kind of monster world I feel like you don't need it because it's not the centerfold of Celine's world like I feel like if you were following Bastion and him being knowing about monsters and all of this world I feel like it would have been uh, better to know what was around but since you're not following really him you're following Celine you're kind of a little kept in the dark as she is except for the fact of those vampire chapters which were really good I really enjoyed seeing the other perspective and it reminded me of Stefan Salvatore from Vampire Diaries and I really didn't want to compare this book to Vampire Diaries like I really wanted or like any other vampire books I wanted to kind of distinguish it as its own but when Stefan Salvatore is the Ripper and if you've watched Vampire Diaries you will understand what I mean by when he's the Ripper. Next I'm going in with the brush and a, the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Kit which is literally broken. I've had this for I think two years. So I'm just gonna go and take some of the pan and kind of outline my eyebrows. So if you know who the Ripper is from Vampire Diaries, when Salvin Salvatore kind of turns off his humanity button, it reminded me so much of that because this guy is kind of like, he's out for revenge and while like Stefan Salvatore doesn't care about revenge, and I hate the fact that I'm even bringing him up because I didn't want to compare them, but when I was thinking of someone who's been killing and kind of like doesn't care about them, and they're kind of like serving like a greater purpose. It just reminded me of how Sal how like Stefan Salvatore just kind of like would just kill mercilessly and kind of not care. Anyway, the love triangle in here. I am adoring the love triangle and usually I've been really out of a love triangle sphere lately. Not in the fact that I don't love them. I do love them but lately in the books that I've been reading they've been done poorly. I just haven't been loving them because it's clear a lot of the time who they're going to end up with which I sometimes I don't m tend to mind because I like knowing who to ship but a lot of the times it's not even because they're done poorly it's just like you don't care and you know the one guy is gonna succeed and you don't care really about the other one but in this one you care about both guys and I didn't realize when I was reading it and I was like why did they have to bring these people in to show like like why is this scene needed for the overall like picture and it was setting up the stupid love triangle and I was like why and I was like why are they why is Renee Adier making me like this guy more because I already like was in love with the other guy and I was like and then it all came into focus on why she was doing that because she wants to set up an actually good love triangle where you don't know who's gonna actually get the girl which I appreciate. I appreciate the fact that she's like really trying and she's not just handing over the, I'm about to say the maiden, handing over the chick, Celine, to be to one guy and I appreciate that. However, she does say I love you at the end of this. Well, does she say it? Yeah, she basically says it. So they basically kind of like show that they do have feelings for each other but circumstances permit her to actually give the other guy a chance which it's fun so I did my eyebrows which look fine I don't know I'm not the best at eyebrows next I'm going back in with that morphe palette going in with a little like eyeshadow brush I'm just gonna go in with a darker contour color and I'm just gonna go into the lip right here because I'm a person who likes to look like I have great juicy lip and doesn't have enough money to actually get them done. So I'm putting this here to kind of give the illusion they're bigger. Then I'm going to go in with this Morphe E8 brush. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to go to the white powder and just kind of smush it in and go on my cupid's bow. And I'm going to go in the middle of my nose and kind of stroke it up also here. Then I'm going to take that same color. I'm going to go into my eyebrow. And then I'm going to take the more rosy color called Cosmic. And I'm just going to do that on 
the cheeks the love triangle i just appreciated how renee Adier didn't flounce around it because you don't want a love triangle where you clearly know who's gonna win i usually use a different um mascara for my bottom eyelashes but since i can't find it i have to use this here we have some choices so i'm gonna go in with the morphe mega matte dominate lipstick so usually i might take something like this that's a tiny little brush and i'll dab it on the thing just to outline and I'll go under the lip to kind of give that more full look so I tend to like to overline my lips because I wish I had bigger lips and that they were more even because this side tends to be more slant than the other side once I have that then I'll go in with this so I just will take this and I'll just even it out until they look something like that I'm liking the color however it's a little bit lighter than I thought it would be. Let's see. So I have a darker, I think, color. I think I'm going to go with a darker kind of in the middle. And so far, this is kind of the look we've kind of settled on to kind of match the cover. Gray to kind of reddish to red. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this book. Four out of five, five out of five stars. I really haven't made up my mind. I think it's going to be a 4.5 for me. It was a great book. The atmosphere is great. The love triangle is great. Again, it builds up. It's not slow. It's just a very build up book which is very character heavy with great characters i would highly recommend this if that is your cup of tea i really enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed this vlog some of my reading quippets that i've put into it and like and subscribe if you want more let me know if you like these makeup videos i'll try and do more i don't pretend to be a makeup artist but i do try so let me know if you like this and i'll see you guys in my next video toodles